Hey guys, I'm Joe, you're watching Blown. Today we're gonna do a really quick, really simple demonstration of how to jumpstart just about any type of car with any type of situation, whether it's top post, side post, or if your battery's not even in your engine bay. And if you got the time, please stick around because I'm gonna show you the reason why your battery might not be charging. It might not be the battery, it might be something else. All right, so now most vehicles nowadays are going to pretty much not be a top post, but for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna really quickly go over top post procedures. On a top post, you're usually gonna have your negative closest to the body or to the chassis, and then usually the positive is gonna be over on the other side away from the chassis. But to make absolute sure, they will usually be stamped a negative and a positive sign on them telling which one is positive and negative. Now, if you have a side post battery, or your battery's not in the engine bay where they normally are, there's always going to be some type of red cap that you can pull up that will have your auxiliary battery positive. Like on this Dodge Journey, it's right here. And there will also be a stud usually on the firewall. There will be something around there that will tell you what the ground is. So now basically these connections connect directly to your battery. So let's go over the connection procedure because this is pretty important. So obviously before you start, you're gonna have a car with a good battery and a car with a dead battery. You're going to want to park them to where, you know, the hoods are as close to each other as possible or the bonnets. Side by side can usually work, but I usually like to do nose to nose if you can make that actually happen. Now, once you've inspected and identified both of your terminals, now we can go ahead and connect the jumper cables. The first one that you want to do always is red to dead, meaning you want to connect one of the red handles on your jumper cables to the dead battery positive. Then from there, we go to the working car, the good car that is running, and we put the other side of the cable, the red positive connection on there. Then while you're there, you wanna go ahead and put the negative side of the working car onto that terminal. And then last, you always wanna remember black to metal ground, which means you wanna go back to the dead car and try to find the ground like I was talking about and connect that one last. Now, if you do have top post, I usually put it straight to the post because for, well, for reasons that we'll get into here in a minute, but I know m most people like to put it somewhere on a good grounded point, which would be an exposed piece of metal connecting to either the engine or the chassis. Now, when you do this, you don't want to have any type of lights on on the bad car, or you don't want to have any type of like the heat on or the blower motor or anything like that, because that's just going to draw more of a current but you will know that you have actually a good connection when something like your dome light is completely like brown, you know, it's not burning very brightly. Once something like your dome light comes back or your dash kind of comes back, that's kind of how you know you got a good connection. Now you might want to take the handles and just kind of jiggle them a little bit, kind of go back and forth just to make sure that you got a good connection. Do this and let this sit for about five minutes with the good car running and with everything off of the car that is dead. Actually, you should probably keep everything off of the good car too as well. You want as much current going to the dead battery as possible. Now go ahead and crank the dead vehicle. If it doesn't crank or it just kind of clicks, leave it sit, go back, readjust your connections, make sure everything is right. Again, look for the indicator of the dome light being brighter and your gauge is coming on. Let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. Once you do get it to crank to where it actually starts, leave it connected for a couple minutes, I would say. So basically, once the dead car is running, remove the cables pretty much in the reverse order of what you did it. Now for instances where you have top posts and you're not really getting a good connection you always want to make sure that your actual terminals are tight and they want to be free of corrosion if you have to do that first that's going to make this operation go so much smoother now if you have something like you know the side post or the battery that's auxiliary that you can't find you always want to make sure that you check all of the connections where like that auxiliary positive is going to be or where the ground is. The biggest problem that I see people charging batteries that don't have top post are they're not getting a good ground. And that's usually because where they intend you to put the ground, it's corroded. Um, something like a wire brush or honestly even like a butter knife, if you could scrape some of that off just to get good connections is kind of the whole thing. Also, like I just mentioned in with this 94 Roadmaster that I just did, there is a spot, this has an auxiliary positive, which actually became very loose and very corroded. And you know, when things like that go on, it's very, very hard to jumpstart a car. Your best bet in most cases is to sit and wait probably at least 15 minutes. Once you know you got a good charge, and let it just, you know, kind of keep charging. And now if you want to go past this, if you're having problems jump-starting your car all the time, uh, there's probably a problem, usually with the alternator or the battery itself. But loose connections at the battery 
will kill a battery and it will also kill an alternator. So one thing that I suggest anyone getting for just around the house for anything is one of these cheap, this was like $10 voltmeter. And what you wanna do is, well, once you've got it started, after the engine's been off for a while, you wanna check your battery voltage. It wants to be, it has to be somewhere around 12 for a general reference, usually 12.5, 12.4, 12.6. Then what you can do is start the car, keep your voltmeter on there, and you're gonna to wanna to see the voltage jump up to between 13.4 and 14.4, then you will know that your alternator is working well. And then how you actually check your battery, like for cold cranking amps, you can have a friend connect a voltmeter to your battery, and then while you crank it, tell him to watch it and see how much the voltage drops. You don't want it to drop anything lower than like 10, 2, I think. You might want to check on that, but this is just kind of a generalization. If this goes from like 12.6 down to like nine or 10 volts. And so now if that does happen, you probably have a bad battery, which could very well be from bad connections because you know the battery isn't getting charged properly. I've also seen it happen where bad connections will actually ruin an alternator because it's overcharging the whole time. It just kind of fries the diodes in it. But in any event, if I missed anything out, please comment down below. If that helped you out, please like, subscribe, and comment. And I also just recently opened up memberships. And I was always kind of against it because I didn't really see what the point was. But we have three tiers. Kind of the second tier is you might as well just get the first tier because I'm going to do everything that you'd get in the second tier. But for the third tier, I'm actually going to be offering kind of a technical support where you can contact me. And if you're having any problems with your vehicle or electronics, anything like that, I will kind of give you a little hand and, uh, you know, maybe give you wiring diagrams, removal and installation procedures, stuff like that for vehicles, autos, home things, anything. If it's within something I can do, then, you know, I will be there to help you for it. But anyways, I really hope that helped you guys out and uh, thank you. Have a good one.